because we are merging into the Fonnie Willis conversation, I want to talk about something else. Let's talk about it real quick. There was a hearing in a Senate hearing committee today about pretty much about Fonnie Willis specifically, but it was also about uh, Georgia process of Georgia district attorneys as a whole and how much power they have and decision making and budget and how they spend money and all this other type of stuff. Right. Remember, I told y'all a few weeks ago, Fonnie Willis is a master of law. She grew up. Her dad was a master lawyer, international civil rights lawyer, internationally known. She grew up in law. She became a lawyer. She grew up in a gang territory in South in, in L.A., Los Angeles. So she know she knows the law, right? Um, the reason that the state is putting so much fo- the reason that the Senate is putting so much focus on Fonnie Willis is because they realize when she ended up prosecuting or indicting Donald Trump. And they saw her, they saw what she was doing with Nathan Wade and how she hired him and was paying him all his money and what she did with these cases and how she got the money from the Fulton County Commission. They realized that everything she was doing was allowed. She didn't break any rules. It seems like she broke rules, but she didn't break any rules. And the main reason that what they're realizing is that there's essentially no handbook or no rule book that's specific to district attorneys. Essentially, district attorneys only have the same obligations as every other lawyer in the state under the Georgia bar. They don't have special rules for district attorneys. And the reason you need special rules for district attorneys is because they have so much power. So you need to have a separate set of rules for people with that much power. They have a separate rule book for judges. Remember, we talk about... um, the, the Georgia Code of Ethics for judges all the time because we talk about Rule 2.9 and all this other type of stuff. They have rules for judges, they have rules for lawyers, but they don't have Georgia doesn't have any specific rule book or handbook or guidelines for the 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 how a district attorney is to govern her domain or her or his domain, right? The state, I, I'm saying the state is just realizing this. But this is essentially how Georgia has been run since the 1700s when Georgia was created as a state, right? This has been unchanged. District attorneys have had pretty much absolute power in their district going back since the 1700s. It took for a black woman to get this much power and to go after a powerful white man for them to say, you know what? We can't allow this anymore. So all this time, all of these white men been doing what they've been doing and it has been totally fine. They've been getting budgets and managing them and hiring who they feel like hiring, treating people how they want to treat them, firing who they want to fire with no oversight by the state at all. No oversight by any counties at all. There's even case law to say when a county was trying to tell a district attorney what to do with the money that the county gave them, a, a, a court found that the county doesn't have any jurisdiction over a district attorney and they can't tell them anything. Once you give the district attorney money, they can do whatever they feel like doing with the money after you give it to them. It's not your money anymore. It's their money now. And even the Fulton County Commission that gave Fonnie Willis $75 million, even they are mad right now because she told them she needed the money so that she can catch up on 40,000 backlog cases from COVID, right? She ended up using the money to prosecute Donald Trump and his YSL indictment, right? But because they don't because the district attorney can do whatever they feel like doing with the money, even though they said they was going to do something else, the, the uh, Fulton County has no has no fight. There's no fight that they can put up to either get some of that money back or to tell the state, hey, they're doing the wrong thing with that money. They have no there's no no oversight for district attorneys in this state. Right. So the state hearing the state senate had this hearing and they brought in some other prosecutors from around the state some that have experience with with small um, counties or small districts and then some when i say small i mean um they don't have big budgets like small budget out rural rural counties and stuff like that and then they brought in one guy that was um that was over gwinnett county which is one of the largest suburbs uh, one of the largest suburban counties of the metro Atlanta area, right? Gwinnett County is huge. It's not only big geographically, but it has a lot of people in it. So they brought the old, a former prosecutor of that county, brought him in. So they all just came together and the Senate committee wanted to ask them, hey, so 
Fonnie Willis is doing this over here in Fulton County. Is that correct? Is she doing the right thing? And they all pretty much told her, I mean, told the committee, yes, she's doing the right thing. Pretty much nobody has the power to tell us what to do. We don't have to listen to the county. Yes, we get money from the state. Yes, we get money from the county. Yes, we use that money to hire employees. But no, we do not have to follow anybody else's rules. Put it like this. They even found out it's so deep that let's say I'm in Fulton County or, or let's say I'm the district. I'm, I'm, I'm over one of these districts, right? I'm district attorney of, you know, what I'm saying district 20 and I have three counties in it. One of them is Clark County. One of them is, you know, Walton County and one of them is whatever, some other county, right? If Walton County gives me money as the district attorney to hire somebody, right? And this is essentially a county employee. When that county is closed down for a holiday, I don't have to let that employee off of work for the holiday that their job is celebrating. They pretty much belong to me and I can tell them what to do. And if they take that day off because their employer has that day off, I can fire them for it and they can't do anything about it. So that's like district attorneys have absolute power in their jurisdiction. They could not, not absolute power, but you know, nobody can really tell them what they can and can't do. Right. As long as they're not uh, committing a crime, they can do what they want. They can they can take all the money from freaking from the county commission and go buy new work vehicles for everybody if they wanted. They, they could do that if they wanted to. And nobody could tell them not to. So but what the commission was realizing is that, oh, so Fonnie Willis is actually doing things that she's supposed to be doing or that she has the power to actually do and she's not breaking any rules. So now what they want to do is now they want to put rules in place and the smaller counties are saying, Hey, I don't think you should do that because that's one County. You're about to mess up the whole state and all of what district attorneys can do because of what one County is doing. And that's the biggest County. So we're small counties. We're small districts. Why should we be governed by the same rules that a large County is governed by? It doesn't make sense. And the, and the committee is like, yeah, I hear you when I consider that. But pretty much we can't really just have y'all running around doing whatever y'all feel like doing. Like there needs to be some oversight. And once again, I'm going to say it again. And and um, I'm going to say this again. Right. It they've been doing this for hundreds of years. This is how it has. Georgia has operated for hundreds of years. But because they realized that a black woman not only had the power, but was using her power to prosecute rich white men. They said, we got to put an end to this right now. And she's about to win re-election. So if we don't get these rules put in place before she wins re-election, she's probably going to keep on doing it. We can't. And, and then Fulton County is the largest, richest county in the uh, in the state. Right. Largest by population. And it's the richest. Black people run Fulton County. So even if they don't get Fonnie Willis in here, there will probably be another black district attorney that wins after her, right? And after seeing, oh, Fonnie Willis just set a new precedent. Fonnie Willis just let everybody say, hey, y'all, we are prosecuting rich white people now. And we are prosecuting them essentially as criminal organizations. So we can do RICO cases against them too. They, the state is like, oh, no. That's setting a bad precedent. We can't allow that. So before we let black people think that they can just prosecute and have absolute power over rich white people, we got to put a stop to this right now. Even though we've been doing this for 300 years, even though there has been black district attorneys before, they haven't used their power against powerful white people. So while some people around the country are looking at... Um, so while some black people, uh, not some black people, but some people are looking at Fonnie Willis as like this, this evil person. She's going after Young Thug. She's going after Donald Trump and all that. What she's doing is saying, I'll go after anybody that I think is a criminal, whether you are a black man from the trenches or whether you are a white man from a penthouse in Manhattan. I'm on you if you do something wrong in my county. She even told the dudes that was doing the um, uh, drug rich in them. Listen, I really, I don't care what y'all do in DeKalb County. I don't care what y'all do out there in Conyers and all that. If you rob houses in Fulton County, 
I'm, I'm, I'm on you. And guess what? She indicted drug rich. She told him, do that. She pretty much said, do that in DeKalb County. But if you come over here, I'm on you. I'm going to get you. And that's exactly what happened because they caught a case. Um, so I think that it's very interesting how politics, like people don't really not talk about this all, all the time. YSL trial is such a landmark case and it's bigger than this whole YSL. It's bigger than YSL. It has such major political uh, implications because we're talking about county funding. We're talking about elections. We're talking about how people campaign to get elected. We're talking about how the state views district attorneys. We're talking about the power that district attorneys have has to indict people and what evidence is, 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 is allowed and what relationships you can have and can you hire special prosecutors and all, like a lot of this is a lot of this is 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 it, like when they had one of these hearings they brought the YSL trial up pretty much the whole hearing you see what I'm saying so this trial is is a major political piece in how Fulton County is going to move forward afterwards that's why I'm telling y'all all of the judges are going to be on the state side here in this in this case